with Times Square. The New York Theater District wasn't always located in this neighborhood. The city's early theaters were primarily built downtown, where most people had settled in what is known today as the Financial District and Chinatown. The city's first documented performance in 1732 was actually held in a simple room in an existing building, which eventually became known as the Playhouse. In the period between the American Revolution and the Civil War, the arts in America began to flourish, and Lower Manhattan became increasingly crowded. Throughout the final decades of the 1800s, lured by cheaper real estate uptown, the New York Theater District slowly began to move north along Broadway, passing through Union Square, Madison Square, and Herald Square, before finding the theater at Broadway and 44th Street, just around the corner from where you're standing right now. Broadway became known as the Great White Way, due to the brush art lamps lighting up the dirt road and electric white lights illuminating marquees. In the early 1900s, three brothers from Syracuse, Sam, Lee, and J.J. Schubert, would become Broadway's most prominent landlords, first facing the Herald Square Theater and quickly building a massive organization operating multiple theaters. By the roaring 20s, there were more than 70 theaters in and around Times Square, but the roar was short-lived. The Great Depression, Following the 1929 stock market crash, hit the theater industry hard, and many playhouses converted into movie houses. The end of World War II led to another boom period that many refer to as the Golden Age of Broadway. During this time, two of the largest current theater owners, Drew Jansen and Niederlander, came off the scene, first purchasing the St. James and Palace theaters as they began to expand their footprints. By the late 1960s, crime was on the rise, and the declining economic conditions caused many theaters to sit empty for months and years on end. The city desperately needed to reinvigorate Times Square, and one of its solutions was the Marriott Marquis. In order to make space for the new hotel, five Broadway theaters would have to be destroyed. Protests ensued, but to no avail. After the Great Theater Massacre of 1982, landmark laws were enacted to protect the remaining Broadway houses. In the mid-90s, Disney signed a 99-year lease on the long-neglected New Amsterdam Theater on 42nd Street. The city cleaned up Times Square, and it became vibrant and tourist-friendly once again. Over the last two decades, Broadway's theaters have been constantly filled and there's even a waiting list for incoming shows. In 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Broadway shut down for its longest period of time to date. After 18 months, Broadway reopened and the city's heartbeat began pulsing again. Broadway remains one of the top reasons people come to New York City. Thank you for visiting the Museum of Broadway. We hope you enjoy your time here and that you leave with a new and exciting appreciation for the wonderful world of Broadway. All right, folks, here's me.